Hello, everybody. Welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I'm the Outback Al. I'm Hot for Justice. And I'm Chibi Noob. And uh, Envy Jitters will not be uh, joining us today or next week. He is currently out of town on... I don't know. Is a wedding considered business or what is that? Personal time. Personal time, yes. He's off hitting on bridesmaids. Uh, <laughs> in the meantime, we watch shows this week. Um... Well, we watched a couple different shows this week. So we watched, all together, we watched uh, episode 10 and 12 of Tiger and Bunny, episode mm-hmm. 4 of Kabuki Sherlock, Gav and Envy will be will have been continuing Ascendance of a Bookworm, episode 5, right? Um, I think so. And me and Shibby who don't want to watch Bookworm anymore, moved over to Babylon, where we watched episode one and two. Yes. So, a little confusing, but hopefully it'll get easier as we keep going. Mm-hmm. So we've been starting with Ascendants of Bookworm for, for the most part, so so Gav, I guess it's the Gav show now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, as you know, last time, I mean, if you're watching it, or, you know, you're watching our podcast, uh... The clay tablets ended up not working out um, because they exploded. <laughs> yeah, that was a thing right. that happened. So this week, um, mine is like, oh, uh, well, if I'm going out to the forest still, let's make some wood tablets and like, uh, because I guess it, it starts out with actually the sister, um, Turi, I think is her name. Um, she has her, like, baptism, and so she is going to start working as a seamstress. Um, so the dad gives mine a knife and is like, here, you have to help out with uh, the housework now that your sister is working. Um so giving a six-year-old a knife is i got a knife when i was young i don't know but anyway so (laughs) um mine goes into the forest and is uh you know carving away at some wood to make these like wood tablets um and then what's his face uh lutz lutz Mm -hmm. starts yeah Lutz starts uh helping her um and he's like I'll help you in exchange for you introducing me to Otto um Mr. Otto because he wants to be a traveling merchant and so he wants to talk to Otto about that um so yeah so they make an agreement and then some stuff happens where uh mine's mom ends up like getting rid of the ends up using the wood as firewood oh (laughs) no not realizing that it's for mine's tablets or whatever um so mine gets all like weird and full of that power like that glow that we saw last time Mm -hmm. um and then she faints and then she's like sick in bed with a fever um and Lutz visits her and is like uh you gotta you promise like to get better and like so I can meet so you can introduce me to Otto okay and she's like alright cause you're helping me out and um yeah, she almost gives up because her fever's been, like, so bad for, like, five days or whatever. And she, like, starts glowing with power as she's thinking about giving up on this life. Mm-hmm. And then she remembers what Lutz said. And she's like, no, I can't give up now. And it just kind of, like, ends mm. like that. Mm. Every episode seems to be, here, I'm going to try this new thing. And then everyone ruins it. Yep that and i guess this glowing powerness that she's going magic on. yeah 
something about that. But, like, what's the, like, magical power, like, in, like, what's it in reference to? Is it just, like, does it generate via negative emotions, or? I think she gets angry and just goes Super yeah. Saiyan. I think so. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Hopefully we'll find out more about it next time, or, like, as the series goes on. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. What are your continuing thoughts? I mean, I think it's cute. I think it's a cute show. So, I'm okay with it. Yep. Okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about Babylon next, since that's our other thing right now? Sure. Okay, so... Oh my god, what all happened here? Um, a lot. A yeah. lot happened in two episodes. Yup. Okay, so we start out with... Okay, who's the main guy's name? I forget. Uh, his name is Zen... Uh, I think it's... We'll, we'll call Zizaki? him Zen. It's fine. It's fine. Zen. Yeah. Zen is a prosecutor for mm -hmm. uh, the new district in Tokyo or outside of Tokyo. It's it's explained like that it's like a city that's... It's like Shiniki. Yeah. It's like Tokyo 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, apparently they didn't want to centralize stuff in Tokyo as much anymore, so they started a new township, city, borough, whatever, where it was like a city outside of Tokyo that wouldn't be directly under it. So, um, not super relevant just yet, except that they have, they're, right now they're in the middle of their first ever mayoral elections, and there's a lot of different people in it, there's a lot of different parties that are vying for, you know, power in the new... Uh, establishment and one group is kind of the front runner right now but there's a couple others that are kind of dark horses mm -hmm. not fully relevant just yet um because zen and his partner fumio did i get that right yes fumio and zen are investigating a pharmaceutical company who were falsely advertising the effectiveness of their drugs. And they had, like, paid off a bunch of university professors to claim, like, oh, this drug does amazing things and it'll help everyone and, and do blah, 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 blah. And it doesn't well, it do was, any of that. it was just the one drug in particular yeah. called Agris. Yeah, Agris. So, apparently, it's not very effective, but people are claiming that it's super effective and it's not. Um... But so they're investigating that, and they find amongst some of the evidence that they seized from the office these medical report. This medical report that had a, it was like pages that were like stuck together that were hiding. Uh, someone had written F in blood like a bunch of times on a page, and it was really weird. And there was like hair samples and fingernails inside of it, and it was really creepy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they figure out, okay, this actually came from a different medical facility that was not part of the paid-off universities. And it has to do with this anesthesiologist named Dr. I forget the name. I forget who it was. But it Dr. doesn't matter. Cause... I want to say it's Dr. Inaba, but that is Dr. Inaba. We'll go with that wrong. for now. If it's wrong, okay. it's wrong. It doesn't matter because they go to find Dr. Inaba because he's been out for a couple of days. And they find him dead in his apartment, hooked up to an anesthesia anest anesthesia machine where apparently it was an apparent suicide because he like had the dose just keep going up over 30 hours so he basically drifted off to sleep and died of an overdose of anesthesia mm -hmm. um they're investigating that because apparently he was connected to some other people there was a guy who had come to see him who was from one of the mayoral campaigns and he had a woman with him and they're trying to figure out who the woman is and you know how the guy is connected to everything and they start following the guy and he they find that he's like oh he's walking around with this other lady going to these like uh these people who own construction companies and unions who are help control very large voting groups mm. and and they're realizing, oh my god, this guy who's connected to the mayor, mayor's, the the one of the candidates for mayor, is uh, pimping out these women to get votes for their party. And it has something to do with Agris. We're not quite sure yet. Maybe they were paying off them or something. But they like they start investigating. They follow they follow the woman home to try to figure out who she is because if she can flip on uh, the guy who 
hired her to be a prostitute, basically. They can take down uh, the corrupt mayoral candidates. Mm -hmm. But Fumio follows her, and then Zen, while he's following the, the, the guy connected to the mayor, gets a text from Fumio saying something like, Thanks for so for for helping me out through all this time that we were together in the in the prosecutor's office and all this sort of stuff. Goodbye and blah blah. It's a like really weird text. He comes to the guy to Fumio's apartment and he's hanging from the ceiling in a noose. Yes. He's and committed suicide. Yeah. Well, well an apparent air quotes. Suicide. He's committed suicide because everyone's like no he would never do that he was too into his job he was too like focused and and, and invested in this kind of thing and everyone's like okay is this a cover-up of some kind they killed this guy that way he wouldn't be able to talk about uh, the things that he found so now zen is looking straight into this whole prostitution mayoral campaign situation going on and he he pulls in these other two friends of his they got they got to do this on the very secret because someone already got killed but like he brings in this reporter who has some connections through other journalists and whatnot who might be able to find some stuff and he brings in a detective from the local precinct who it, it might be able to help him investigate a little bit and, and i'll be honest the, the the detective dude seems like a bad guy the first time you meet him but he might not be a bad guy i don't know He's just got one of those faces where it's like, okay, you look evil. <laughs> um, so they start following them around and figure out that, okay, there was this, apparently... May it be mentioned that... The apartment that um, the prostitute was living at was not mentioned. owned. What? Oh, well, I was just going to say, the journalist and him actually happen to be, like, best friends. From, yeah, they're like, friends. Yeah, because so. otherwise it'd be like, oh, you have the prosecutor can't talk with a journalist kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, also, um, I'm sorry if I interrupt you at any no, point. Go for it. Um, go for I it. I'm sure out. I'm going to forget things. No, like I'm literally cutting out and I can't hear you. Um. Oh. Okay. Um. I mean, you you did watch it, so I mean, you'll probably know where I'm at at some point. Um. <laughs> um. God, where was I? Okay. Uh. They they find out that the girl's apartment, uh, is not owned by the mayoral candidate it's owned by a secondary mayor mayoral candidate so apparently there's two different parties in this campaign at least two who are working behind the scenes together to get somebody elected through prostitution so it's it's getting very complicated very quickly and i'm sorry if people aren't following along with this but you should watch the show anyway uh what else happened what else happened um Oh, there was this big golf outing thing or something for a lot of big uh, organizations that were each endorsing different political groups, but all of them seemed to be involved with this one prostitute in a in a in a hotel room at that point. And they pick up the prostitute and bring her in for questioning, and she's like giving them the runaround half the time, kind of laughing at everything. But I guess she says something about like. Oh yeah, I had sex with these three guys or whatever, and blah blah blah, and it's 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 very creep. She's creepy. Um, and she's like trying to, I guess, get information out of the lead detective Zen as well through this interaction, and then she disappears out of nowhere. Because I guess, I don't know if the, the court reporter got drugged or something, but, like, he, he just, she just walks out. Um, well, pretty sure he did, because he was kind of yeah, in, Yeah, he was like, out of it. He was out of it, but then, once he got out of it, apparently he was in hysterics for a while. So. Yeah, so he, he probably got roofied. And, yeah, then the guy has to give his findings to a... Uh, police council prosecution's office or something and um i guess to to figure out whether they're going to further the investigation into the mayoral candidate but right before he's about to give the evidence and tell them what he's investigating the candidate for mayor walks in and sits down on the meeting and that's where we left off so so much going on here chibi what do you did i miss anything you were talking so fast, I couldn't keep track of everything that you were saying. I'm sure not everybody can. This is a very complicated show, and we watched two episodes, so it's like a lot of stuff going on. 
Um, let me think. Was there anything that you missed? Mm. I think I hit everything. Started with the drug mm. stuff. Led to the, the doctor. Then mm. the prostitution stuff. Fumio gets killed. They start investigating the prostitution ring and the connections to the candidates. And they find a connection, but before she can sign her confession, she disappears, and then he has to present his evidence to, the, I guess, the other prosecutors and whatnot, but then the candidate walks in. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thoughts? I am very interested to see what is going to happen, because... It, it's a very, very tangled web they weave, and I want to know where it's all going. It hooks you very quickly. Mm-hmm. Because, like, the end of the first episode is where they find the, the, the pro- one prosecutor dead. And that's mm-hmm. a lot, so... I have a feeling this is going to get... This is going to be some very, very... Uh, I don't know, in-depth conspiracies going on here. And I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it's like it's so early yet in the show where, well, at least where we're at. I, I think like four episodes have come out, but we didn't want to like overbog ourselves with like a ton of episodes to watch this week. So we're going to be a little mm-hmm. bit behind for these next two weeks. Well, no, I think it, it, I'm going to uh, spoiler. This is a yay for me. Um, well, duh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. Next week, we'll probably watch episode three and four as episode five is coming out. And then the week after, we'll be caught up with episode five and six. So after that point, it'll probably get easier to explain because we'll only be doing one episode at a time. But yeah, there's a lot going on here. Um, It's not 100% clear who everyone's allegiances where they're at. Not 100% clear who all the big players are going to be. Because, like, we have connections in a bunch of different campaigns. There's a bunch of different things going on. There's drugs, there's prostitutes, and all sorts of other stuff happening. It's like, okay, this is a lot to take in all at once. Or twice, if it's two episodes. But, yeah. Like, so far, we, we just basically have Zen, and he's out to serve justice. And his buddies to help him. And I'm not sure whether the, the the chief prosecutor is is in on the conspiracy or not because like he just kind of walked him in there. Like I don't know whether we can trust him now or not. Could you repeat like everything you just said for the past thirty seconds? Oh god! Not, well, not everything. Just simplify it because I literally could not hear any of that. I'm sorry. Bad internet connections. Okay, so Zen so far seems like a decent protagonist. He's very driven. Mm-hmm. He's very yep. motivated to get the results to help people Mm -hmm. and root out corruption good for him he's very harvey dent at the beginning of dark knight Mm -hmm. we're not sure where everyone else stands right now because one we don't really know anyone yet but two we don't know where allegiances are going to lie because this is a political scandal there's a lot of things going on here it hasn't become a scandal yet it's currently a conspiracy but Mm -hmm. There's journalists involved, there's detectives, there's prosecutors, there's the higher-ups who, are they on Zen's side, are they not on his side? I don't know, because the chief prosecutor has seemed like he was on his side for the most part, but then he walks him into a meeting and tells him, hey, present your evidence to the guy who he's investigating. And it's like, mm-hmm. what's he gonna I do? Think for right now, like, you said the police detective seemed shifty. I think he's okay. For now. Yeah. I think it's just the way he looks. He's got like those like squinty eyes with the beady pupils and it's kind of you kind of see that character design for like a lot of villains and he's very smiley in like a that kind of sleazy sort of way. Eh, I don't know. It kind of depends. If they put him in like a different sort of context, I could definitely see that, but I don't know. Just kind of how they present him, not so much for me. Mm. But I feel like with a lot of these characters, they're kind of drifting into Uncanny Valley for me. Not not so much, like, with their personalities, but just, like, animation-wise. It's well Mostly animated, because... I'll say that. No, it is, but the thing is, is they're using 3D animation for a good bit of it. Are but, they? But, like, making it look 2D. Like, I, it's very 
jarring for me to watch it. Huh, okay. I like, do... nothing really I seems like that. it's hand-drawn, is what I mean. Mm. Like, or even digital, like, just, like, 2D digital drawings. Like, a lot of it seems like they're 3D sort of models that are made to look 2D. But I, it's, like, more seamless than, like, say, some of the 3D models that we see in, like, Tiger and Bunny. Well, I mean, it's been 10 years since Tiger and Bunny came out, so yeah. I hope they got improvements. But, like, yeah, oh, yeah I hadn't sure. particularly noticed that. I'm going to have to like, look a little closer as we uh, keep going. If you go back and watch the first, like, the very first scene in episode one, um, where they're showing them all walking... Like just look at like oh the, well like a like a walking yeah people yeah that use 3D walking, animation walking animations are all the time like those 3D things but but it was just like I noticed it like a lot like just throughout pretty much all of it and I guess it's like kind of the lighting that they do for the characters with like the shine that's like coming down on their shoulders hmm. I don't know it just it, to me it looks really weird okay. Well, Not that I, I don't like the show. It's just, like, no, yeah. it's weird for me to, like, watch and try to understand what's going on at the same time when I keep getting distracted. I can kind of understand that. It didn't distract me so much. I, I don't... I'm going to have to look closer to see what you're seeing because I, I personally didn't see it. Some people look a little weird, like the, the prostitute who's being in, investigated. I think she was intentionally meant to look uncanny oh, no. She's, in some she fashion. She was made to look creepy yeah like not that i'm not talking about like facial features meant to look creepy just like their movements to me don't look right yeah she's off but she's intentionally so so it's it's supposed to make you tense whenever she's on the in the scene and it's it's effective i gotta say this is a very effective show with what they're doing i think um obviously we were still pretty early on in it so, you know, this could be another one of those shows where it's like, the first three episodes were great, and then it just peters off. I'm hoping not, because they're setting up a lot of things that I feel like could be investigated and given a lot of twists and turns and all sorts of stuff that could go a, a number of different places. Um, I don't know. What, 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 where do you think this is going? Did we lose Chibi? Uh, I was about to ask, did we lose Gav? <laughs> no, I'm here. <laughs> I was about to be like, am I alone? Uh, I mean, you were for probably oh, a second. I was. Okay. Good to know. So what are your thoughts of where this is going, do you think? Who, me? Yes. Gav didn't watch it. <laughs> um. Well, I mean... Personally, I'm, like, wondering, like, just sort of how it's going to connect into everything. And, like, I'm wondering, I'm thinking it's probably all going to come back to the drug. But I'm wondering if it's going to be more, maybe, mind control. I don't know. Like, I'm wondering if it's just a larger conspiracy theory. But you're also talking to the person who really loves conspiracy theories. No, I get that. I, I don't know about mind control. Like, it, 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 uh, I'm not saying that it might be completely out of the realm of possibility. It just feels like this one's a lot more rooted in, like, reality than, like, say, if, if you brought up mind control, I'd be like, okay, in Copcraft, I'd be like, absolutely, yeah, sure, that's a possibility there. But, like, I feel like this is... I don't know. I feel like this is. I don't a... know. If we're if we're talking about like trying to gain political favor and like getting people to vote for certain people, I don't know. It's just it all kind of seems to me like you're trying to get more people. What better way to like get them to do what you want than giving them this drug that seems to have no effectiveness and then turns out to be actually kind of dangerous. Well, the practical side of me would say the best way to ensure votes is to bribe the leaders of groups of people with sex to get them to tell people to vote a certain way. 
I'm just saying, it just... <laughs> Which seems to be how it's setting reason, it up. For some reason, it's going to... For some reason, I feel like it's just... It's all going to go back to that, but it's probably going to be a bit more crazy than we really think, is basically yeah. what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. There's something weird going on with the drug stuff, though they've been taken... Uh, Zen was taken off of that case. We should say that, that he... Um, because of the connections to the other stuff him and Fumio were taken off of it and put onto the political side of it while other people are investigating the larger pharmaceutical uh, felonies. Probably because they don't want them to see what the drugs actually do. That's possible. It will definitely swing around at some point, but it's just how will it do it is the question. Um, I'm trying to think of like what else is to say or, or what's what else has been going on with it i don't know i think that's that's it gav from our description what what can you tell us about this show uh i was kind of spacing out <laughs> yeah that makes sense <laughs> in, in case like i actually want to watch it so oh okay should that and there was just a lot <laughs> Well, it, if if going forward you want to watch us later, like you, you can just like, you know, go away from the keyboard or whatever, and we'll text you when we're done. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I guess we're pretty much done. Unless unless Chibi has anything else to say about it. Mm, nope. Okay. Well, I'm a yay on it. So for next week, cause cause um. Gav and Envy are still yay on Bookworm. They'll be watching episode six of that, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. And me and Shibby will be watching three and four of Babylon, which I, I need to look up more about Babylon because I have a feeling that 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 because the city, the name of the city, isn't Babylon, but they're calling it Babylon. It has to have something to do with that, with the mythology around there. I'm betting. So I might look up some of that in the meantime. Um, but yeah, we'll be watching episode three and four of Babylon. And moving on to Kabuki Cho Sherlock. So, we got our obligatory hot spring episode. Ugh. <laughs> oh, did you not like this one? Who, me? Yeah, or did you just not like the trope? I, I was just like, come on, get to the story. I think we lost Chibi. I don't know. I guess I'm not really one for these kinds of episodes, but that's just me. What, you don't like your man service? <laughs> Hello? I'm here. Did yeah. you catch what I said? You don't like no. these kind of episodes? Yeah. I get you. Okay. Well, it was it was basically, it showed like I wasn't talking, so I wasn't sure if you guys were hearing me. Oh, okay. Yeah, we heard we heard the tail end of that, but I, I feel like we got the gist of what you were getting at. Okay. Um, so in this episode, uh, Moriarty gets three tickets to a, a hot spring sauna, spa day kind of thing. Yeah. And he takes Sherlock and Watson, and and he gets Sherlock to come along because there's a re. I'm sorry, say the say the comedic style again. Rakugo? Rakugo. Rakugo. Mm-hmm. It's a, there's a Rakugo comedian who's going to perform after everyone's at the, at the spa. So he's like, yep, we're going. I'm down. Uh, Watson tags along because, you know, extra ticket. But he's never been to a public bath place, so he has no idea what he's doing. And everyone's like, oh, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. I'm like, Dude, let, let him do how, how he wants to do. Uh, but as this is a a Sherlock thing happening obviously there has to be a murder and there is in the form of a disappearance of a peach headed rock star there a there's there's a rock band who all wear masks one's a monkey one's a dog one's a pheasant and one is a peach with a skull. Okay. And I guess they're a new band, and, and you know, bands have band troubles and whatnot, and they, uh, the peach has gone missing. 
uh, and we saw earlier apparently Pheasant and Peach were fighting because artistic differences. Yeah. And yeah, uh, this... I'm going to be honest, the case is not the f extent of the episode, so it's actually pretty short. So they're just like... Yeah, Pheasant and Monkey... In, not Monkey. Pheasant and Peach got into a fight, and Pheasant left... Peach showed up, didn't say anything to anyone, but then disappeared halfway through the day. And they're like, well, where was Dog in all of this? Because Monkey's telling them a lot of this. And Dog was like, I was off where no one could see me for a very long time. And then everyone's just like, oh, okay, so here's what happened. Uh, Pheasant uh, got into a fight with Peach. Peach smacked his head off a table and died by accident. Um, then Dog covered it up by, like, splashing coffee all over the blood and took Peach's place when he went into the hot spring after everyone else had seen Dog walk in and then Peach went missing. Everyone started going, oh no. And then, yeah, then Dog says he killed Peach, but he didn't kill Peach. It was Pheasant and he wants to defend Pheasant because his music is so much better than everyone else and he needs to blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah. But really, this was about Moriarty trying to figure out about John Watson. We find out. Because mm. Moriarty apparently runs the little children pickpocket gang. And they need to know more about John. And apparently he's a crybaby. Because, <laughs> I don't know, this was a weird episode. Which is weird to say because every episode has been weird. In this show. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. it was like the, the case was not the focus here at all. Um, we got a little bit of backstory about Sherlock, I guess, how he originally wanted to be a Rakugo comedian performer guy, but like he just wasn't very good at it. And yeah, I think that's it. Did I miss anything? I think they passed out in the sauna at some point. Yeah. And the uh, Rocket Ghost canceled. Yeah, because murder. <laughs> yeah. Um. And. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. What did you guys think of this episode? Um. I thought it was funny <laughs> yeah like just the whole hot springs thing was entertaining um and how john didn't know what he was doing like at all uh, fair, i wouldn't know what i'd be doing yeah me neither but um you find out about i guess more about moriarty and sherlock's relationship um yeah a little bit which is an odd one. And Moriarty thinks they're like best friends. And Sherlock thinks they're acquaintances. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I don't know if Sherlock's one of those people who like actually says he has any friends. So Yeah. I think he's as close of friends as he has is Watson and Moriarty at this point. Yeah. Um. Hmm trying to think but, yeah. what else um no I think that's pretty much it what, that's that's all that happened mhm mm I mean it was funny it was kind of weird I like I kind of wish like we had had more of an episode about a case as opposed to just let's stick around in the hot springs for a while yeah. and then a case will fall in our laps which we'll solve in five minutes Mm. But you know, take what you can get with some of this. I guess. I guess we'll see how it continues. We didn't really get much furthering of any sort of like larger plot because Watson still hasn't brought up like you know the case to Sherlock at all. Yeah. I'm like, I, I know this is like a 24 episode anime, and we're only in episode four. But I'm like, can you get to it a little bit, John? Because you know. You already become this guy's maid. You can you can bring shit up to him. Yeah. 
But yeah, I think those are my thoughts. Yeah. No one else has any, any other things to say about this? Not um, really. I already gave you my thoughts. You didn't like it. I get it. <laughs> I mean, I still want to keep going with the show. I just... Yeah. I just didn't like this episode. Yeah, it was a bit, bit of a detour episode. I'm not going to say necessarily like a filler. I don't know if you can have filler in a, in a short series like this, but a yeah, bit of a fillery one. It's kind of a let's go hang out and then we'll tack on a mystery. That's not a mystery because they figured it out so quickly. Yeah, I... Yeah. I feel like I could have figured out this one too, which is saying kind of how small of a thing it was but yeah so this is still a yay because I think we still haven't seen Jack the Ripper we still haven't seen Moriarty do his whatever he's planning because you know he's a schemer uh, and John hasn't brought up anything else about his case yet so we need to see where that's gonna what what's gonna happen with that so yeah yeah I'm hopefully episode 5 gets us back to Back to actual case solving and things to do. As nice as it is to sometimes get a little bit of backstory on people. I don't think we have to do a whole episode just about it. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be watching episode five next week. Or was this five? Am I am I losing track of things? So this was episode four. Okay, yeah. So episode five next week. Uh, next or last uh, Tiger and Bunny we watched episode 10 through 12 and things things are happening today what did you guys think of these episodes I like them okie dokie yeah. let's get into it so Tiger's supposed to have a day off, and he doesn't, because uh, mm-hmm. there's a terrorist attack on Sternbild, and they have a bunch of those mech suits that were attacking him before, which I guess they're not as tough as we thought, because they go down pretty easy now. I don't know if this is like the aliens kind of thing, where it was like in Alien, the monster, the alien was unstoppable, and then in Aliens, you know, there's a bunch of them, but they're considerably weaker than you could thought the first one was. But, yeah, there's a bunch of mech suits uh, that are destroying bridges and stopping traffic ways and all sorts of stuff. And they're basically, like, uh, chokeholding the city so that no one can get out of, out of town. And they're all being piloted by teddy bears, uh, which are being controlled by some, uh, I don't know, what is the aesthetic this lady is going for? It's like a card-type deal. Is it like a poker goth yeah. or something? I don't yeah, know exactly kinda... how, what to call it. I like Poker Goth. Poker Goth, yes. So Poker Goth Girl. What was her name? I feel like they said I, it a bunch I of times. I thought it. I couldn't tell if they were saying green or cream. Might be cream. Maybe Cree? Maybe. Whatever her name is. Poker Goth is... Poker Goth and whatever the other guy... I don't know what his is He's got dreadlocks and face paints but is bald and I don't know what's going on with him but whoever Vic Mignogna is voicing <laughs> uh, yeah so Poker Goth can pull out her hair she's a next and she can put it inside of a bear and control them and uh, they're piloting mech suits who are holding the city hostage now because they're gonna the their plan. By the way, these people for, are from Ouroboros. Before we say anything else, because that's important, they're a terrorist organization, and they're currently holding the city hostage. Because what they're gonna do is they are going to attack the pillars of the city, because the pl- the entire city is built on um, structures and platforms and stuff. And if they attack the pillars, the entire city will collapse in upon itself and then fall into the ocean. So that's how they're holding it hostage, and they're like, we'll release the city if our boss, Jake Martinez, is released from prison. 
And it was at that point that Bunny realizes, oh my god, Jake Martinez is the guy who killed my parents. Well, so. you, he realized it sooner. Oh, he did. Yeah, but, but, yeah. Which, Jake's just kind of sitting around in his jail cell, drawing a picture on a wall the whole episode while that's happening. And yeah. I want to say, this, he's actually a very talented artist. He has an excellent use of negative space, I think, in his landscape pictures. Because um, he draws a, a landscape, but the negative space looks like a skull of death, because he's an evil dude. And he's voiced by Steve Bloom, which is awesome. Love that guy. Uh, anyway, eventually they get to the point where they're like, okay, the heroes can't be everywhere at once. They can't stop everything that's happening. We're going to give in to the terrorist demands and let Jake Martinez go. Always a mistake, because Jake gets out of jail... And he is a big bad. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. I was like, he's a big bad. He's a big bad. He's got he's got the attitude. He's got the okay. So we should talk about Jake a little bit. I'm gonna describe him as a cross between Magneto and the Joker. Do you feel like that might be accurate? Um. I don't know enough about Magneto to say. <laughs> okay. Like, well, the Magneto thing is that look, he's a next who believes that necks are the are the superior race and they're better than humans and all sorts of stuff like that. And he's uh, like, you know, the world should be ruled by the next. Uh, yeah. And him and Ouroboros are wanting to make that happen. Uh, that's That, I think, is kind of the Magneto element. Okay. And the Joker element is that he's he's a fucking nutcase, um, yeah. and, but he's he's a funny nutcase. Uh, so that's plus his aesthetic is very. Wow, I'm a five year old who just found my mother's makeup and uh, her fur coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, he, you can't say that he doesn't have a distinct style. But yeah, so he, as soon as he's out of prison, he's like, wait, you got hostages? You didn't tell me about hostages. Let's hold them for ransom. And then, uh, uh, I can't really say for sure what his end game is with anything, because he's a weirdo. But yeah, so, whoever evil and just wants to destroy yeah the pretty city. much he's he, he wants to watch the world burn uh but yeah so at some point before their demands were met Vic Mignogna's character whoever he was he comes to the mayor's office with a hostage and he's like hey you know are you gonna give in to our demands or not and they knock him out and origami cyclone replaces him because he can shapeshift. It's good for him. We found a spot where his powers work. And he's infiltrating, and he's a spy, and he's going to find out what, what's going on with Jake and, and, and the gang and, and figure out, you know, how do we stop these guys from doing bad things. Um, doesn't work out. Because he gets caught pretty quickly, actually, uh, after Jake takes the whole place hostage. And we're trying to, they're trying to figure out what his powers are because he's, like, shooting lasers at people. Yeah. And, um... Well, mm. Tiger thinks they're lasers. Tiger thinks they're lasers, yeah. They, 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 they track Origami Cyclone's uh, wristband back to a warehouse where they think Jake might be. And they find Jake, but it's not Jake. It's Origami Cyclone because Origami was threatened to. They threatened by Jake after he found him out. He's like, "Hey, transform into me. Do it now. Do it now." And he transforms into Jake. Tiger and Bunny and everybody else kind of head in, and Jake finds and Jake, Jake like springs a trap on him and blows up the warehouse. And I guess it was Barnaby was supposed to go by himself. Yes. Um, yes, he was. But Tiger followed him. Yeah. And then... And it's getting... Well, why don't you go? Uh, well, I guess, like, they they were starting to get along, like, finally. 
starting to appreciate each other as teammates. Mm -hmm. But then whenever um, Tiger, like, doesn't trust Barnaby to go alone, Barnaby gets pissed off um, at Kotetsu and is like, you know, I was starting to, like, trust you and think of you as a partner and then you go and do that and screw up our plan and now i you can't trust me so i'm pissed off at you and we shouldn't be partners again <laughs> yeah he's having his angsty i'm a lone hero moment yeah because he's a sasuke <laughs> hey no, I'm just, I'm just saying. Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal seems to just have those characters who are just angsty. Um, but yeah, so that happens, and then Jake just randomly shows up at the hero organization because he he that's how he do, <laughs> and he kills the guy who got captured, uh, Vic Mignana. So he didn't last long. Um. And then he's like, hey, so here's what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to do a broadcast where I fight each one of your heroes individually. And if any of them beat me, uh, I'll, I'll leave the, the city alone. But if I win, and what does he get if he wins? Does he just blow up the city? Um, if, yeah, I think basically. Yeah. So, you know battle for the fate of the city thing and they're going to broadcast it all because he likes attention I guess as well and uh, Miss Agnes is having a field day <laughs> uh, yeah not sure how I feel about her uh, yeah she's a bit of a jerk but yeah so they're going to they're gonna fight one by one and see who ends up being the guy who beats the guy. Uh, and they're they're going at random, and they pick a couple different things. So, so, you know, the first person who gets up is Sky High. King of Heroes, he's coming in, he's got to stop the bad guy and all that, and he comes in with a lot of bravado, and, and Jake is just like, all right, let's just do this, man. I, I don't even... Because... Sky High's like, your reign of villainy is over! Yada yada yada! Blah blah blah! And, and JC's going like, dude, I'm trying to eat my soup here. Can we just get this on? So. But in a much more charismatic Steve Bloom sort of way. Uh, Sky High just starts shooting air blasts at him. Nothing works, though. And he just smacks him right around. And they figure out, oh, it's not laser beams that he uses. He has force field powers... And he makes really tiny, thin force fields to shoot at people, and those are his lasers. Mm -hmm. Then Rock Bison's up, and we don't even see his fight. It's like he's done in like an instant. Because I guess he was not much of a threat to Jake. And then they're like, okay, we're going to pick two for the next one. First one's Tiger, and the next one's Barnaby. Uh oh, so Tiger's up to fight. And the fight goes about as well as you'd think. And by that I mean it doesn't go well at all. Uh Jake kind of just dodges every move that Tiger throws at him, and then as soon as his powers are up, he you know, it, he's Kotetsu. He's gonna keep fighting. Yep. But like he slips and accidentally kicks Jake in the head. And that really pisses him off. So he's honestly on the... He like just starts shooting force fields at him. And honestly, he's on the verge of killing Tiger. Yeah. When Agnes comes in to save the day and she's like, Hey, hold on. Don't, don't go all night with this. You know, we need to save some ratings for tomorrow. Because, you know, people aren't going to watch if they're sleeping and blah, blah, blah. And Jake's like, yeah, okay. All right, we're postponing the fight until tomorrow morning. And yeah, she loves the the um, the ratings, but at the same time, it's kind of like one of those situations of like, had she not stopped him, he would have killed Tiger. So I'm gonna give her the save on that one, kind of. But yeah, so next up is Barnaby, and that's happening next episode because we don't we don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, Tetsu just got the with, shit beat out of him. 
Yeah, and it shows uh, Kotetsu going into the ICU. Yup. So, yeah. Things did not end well there. Kind of, it's a cliffhanger. Oh yeah, it's a big cliffhanger. We're we're at the mid season finale now. Yeah. So, what do you guys think is going to happen? Do you think Do you think Bunny will save the day? Mm, no. <laughs> no. Okay. I think that would be too easy. Too easy. I feel like it's, it's not going to be that easy. Okay. Chips, what do you think of these episodes? Um, I thought they were good. Um, I'm glad we finally got to the Ouroboros thing because mm-hmm. it's about time. Um, personally, I'm thinking. I'm not really sure. Uh, if Barnaby is gonna win the fight, but if he does win the fight, it's going to be like a bittersweet kind of win if he does end up getting a victory out of this. Like he kills Jake, but before Jake can talk about his parents? Mm, yeah, something like that. Apparently the guy doesn't even remember how many people he's killed. So. Yep. Yeah. I've already seen it. I know it gets interesting. Um. Yeah, I don't know what else there's to say. There was, you know, we're 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 leading into a big climax coming up. Uh, people are people are trying to save the day. It's not working out too well for them. And Jake's just a, you know, going crazy and having a good time. I guess. Yep. Yeah, this is definitely a yay. We're gonna keep going, right? 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 Yeah. Right. So yeah, I guess yes. next week we'll we'll be we'll be doing uh, episodes thirteen through fifteen of Tiger and Bunny, along with uh, episode five Kabuki Cho Sherlock, episodes three and four of Babylon, and episode five of Ascendance of a Bookworm. Well, some of us will, some of us won't, but you know. Yeah, I think that's. Do we have any final thoughts for this week? A lot of stuff to watch. Not really. Yeah. It was mostly fighting on Tiger and Bunny, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to Babylon, seeing where that's going. I want Kubuki Joe to get back to regular cases, and I'm looking forward to, to a real ass whooping coming up with Tiger and Bunny. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I guess that's it. We'll come back next week and we'll find out what happens to, to Tiger and Bunny. Same Tiger and Bunny channel, same Tiger and Bunny place. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time.